the, we've seen a major resurgence in, in cases here, uh, especially in the United States. There's like a mutant strain that's there, which I'll get to that in a minute as well. But temperature really seems to have something to do uh, with the way COVID spreads, right? Like it's, it's, it's more contagious in the cold. And uh, we got to wonder, like, why, right? Why, why is it that the fall and winter are when it's, it's going to be more contagious? We saw, uh, you know, early on there was, like, weather maps that they drew where it was like, oh, this is where the temperature was colder and this is where we're seeing all these spreads. That's why New York City was getting hit so hard and Boston and all that. Well, uh, according to an immunologist named uh, Mary Brock, I read this article she wrote. Uh, it's because of a lipid layer, a fatty layer, that protects the the um, the, the proteins in, in in the virus that allows it to survive longer in colder conditions. Um, that's why that's why COVID spreads so much in colder conditions because the lipid layer is not gonna is not gonna melt off right in the heat. Like it's like like the way she says it is like butter, uh, butter and heat's gonna melt. Uh, whereas in the cold, it stays strong. That's why you refrigerate butter. It stays, it stays consistent. So it's basically the same principle here. Um, and fun fact, that's what the mRNA vaccine is doing too, by the way, is they're using a lipid layer to protect the mRNA uh, information so it can, it can, you know, your body can create its own, some, somewhat create its own vaccine against, uh, against COVID because the antigens are so temporary. Now, the other reason that, that these viruses spread, too, this is not the be-all, end-all. There's, there's always multiple things when it comes to these sort of things. Usually in the wintertime, we're spending more time inside, which means that we're, we're kind of breathing the same somewhat recirculated air all the time, right? We're not really letting fresh air in because it's cold outside. And it's, you know, why would you? Uh, e- even though I've, I've definitely opened the window in the cold because sometimes my, the, the room we we're in we'll end up getting kind of hot overnight and we'll open the window but anyway the the point being a lot of people are stuck inside with each other so if one person gets sick the other per, the other people that share a household are 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 more than likely to get sick because they're kind of breathing uh the same air um and you know are, are part of the same ventilation system so that's another reason why that happens um and, and you know during the winter time it's it's really hard to get outdoors it's really hard to just go out and do stuff Especially now, like we're we're not going out and doing things because it, it because Epic makes it even more dangerous, right? Like that's you can't go to a venue and be around a hundred people, and if ten of them are sick, like they're gonna get everybody else sick. So, um, and, and especially as fast as this virus is moving, uh, it's not it's not it's not it's not a good idea, you guys. Not a good idea. So, the other the other thing that I've been seeing is you know oh the mrna vaccine is they're trying to alter your dna and they're trying to control your eventually that technology has a possibility of 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 you know being developed i but this is not that technology uh mrna they're they're messenger rna right like they they deliver information to cells uh, you know, cells want to digest them. They want to break them down and get the information and, and start doing what, what uh, you know, the information says to, to help the body in, in some way. So these vaccines aren't really altering DNA. What they're doing is they're sending a piece of information into the cell to say, this is what you need uh, to create this vaccine in your, in your own body, to create these antibodies, to create... Uh, this way to fight this virus. Um, normally, in, with vaccines, they're hitting you with the disease itself, like dead cells of the virus itself. Uh, so your body will create natural defenses. So your body starts creating the antigens that it needs. This is going about it a little differently. It's sending packets of information to your cell. So you, so your body can create what it needs to to build up its own defenses. 
Um, and then it, and then your body just has that information in there, uh, which is great. And you know, I I hope it works. Uh, but and and you know, like I said at the top of this video, I, I don't I don't believe that this is going to be the that this vaccine is the only thing that we need in order to prevent another COVID scare or another pandemic of sorts that'll that'll cripple everything, um, especially when you have an, uh, a government run by uh, a greed-driven capitalist system. Um, I don't think this vaccine is going to be the be-all and all. P- part of that is also because you know you have you have people that aren't going to take the vaccine. Uh, you know, we have to contend with the vaccine deniers. And um, they're talking about a vaccine passport, which I have conflicted feelings about. Um, you know, so it's, it's, it's going to be a very difficult journey through this. So just because this vaccine's out here doesn't mean that this whole thing is saved. Uh, you do have this new quote unquote mutant strain out of UK. It's not really a mutant strain, by the way. It's just that the virus evolved over time. It's what they do. Uh, I believe coronaviruses, and especially novel coronaviruses, evolve frequently. Uh, I might be wrong about that, but I'm but I'm fairly certain. I, I do remember reading that somewhere. I I would have to double check. Don't quote me. But this is just like another evolution of the virus itself. The the best and quickest thing to do. Uh, would have been to halt and quarantine all flights going in and out of the UK. In the EU, they did that very quickly. In America, they didn't. Uh, so I'm sure it's here uh, and it'll spread because this is a this is a fucking backwards country. And you know what that's going to do is is render this vaccine kind of useless which again part of the reason why I'm saying this vaccine isn't the be all end all what really needs to start happening especially in the United States is to completely rethink the philosophy that this country has been built on you can't sustain a country that thrives on endless consumption with limited resources. That math doesn't add up and you don't have to be a genius in math. You can still be a country that is 45th in math and understand that that, that doesn't equal anything. That, 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 that's not, that's not, that doesn't make any sense. We have to, we have to return to a point We have to start thinking about more more community-driven efforts for humanity, period. So what is that? I mean, that means that you have to govern with compassion. You have to govern with empathy. The people that have a lot need to give up some of their comforts to ensure that the rest of us have a little more when the rest of us don't have anything at all. That is not how capitalism is built. That's not how America is built. America is built on a very individualistic platform. It's all about me and it's all about my comfort. There's just the notion that masks became a political argument. Right where it's where they were like, well, don't think about it just for yourself. Think about it for your grandma. Think about it for uh, you know your your loved one that's sick, that has an autoimmune disease. And even then, a lot of people were like, "Fuck that shit." You know. So we have. Th- If we're going to survive this thing, if we're going to ensure that this thing doesn't come back, we need a fundamental change in our philosophy.
By the way, scientists knew that the virus was going to, quote-unquote, mutate, evolve, change. And, and because they change is part of the reason why vaccines tend to take a little bit longer to get developed. That's why they're not rushed. And I do believe that these vaccines were, were rushed. Um, I'm not sure what the... Again, I'm, I, don't, I don't know what is going to happen once people take them. Uh, before it gets to the mass public, we do have uh, doctors and nurses and elderly people taking them to essentially see what the reactions are going to be. And there's some people that have had some allergic reaction. Uh, and they basically are like, they're like, oh, well, if you have allergic reactions to vaccines in general uh, or any vaccine at all, that's, that's probably what's causing this reaction anyway. Okay, well, what are you going to do to combat that? That means that there's a population of people that can't take the vaccine. What are, what are we doing to help those people is the question. I don't know. Uh, more research has to be done. Well, yeah, that's kind of the way science works. Trial error. There's a third vaccine that's now in play. I think, I think Oxford has a vaccine that they're putting, in, putting into play here. We're going to have numerous choices, but again... You know, if we live in the same conditions uh, that we're living in now, under under the pandemic, where people are still suffering, where people are still looking out only for themselves, they're not really caring about what's going on with their communities, well, this thing is due to spike up again. It it's we're we're seeing this new strain pop up and. Instead of taking precautions and saying, okay, we might have to go into a lockdown again in two months. What are we going to do to help the businesses that aren't doing okay? And if Congress's answers isn't monthly stimulus checks uh, sent to every single American citizen, everybody that has a, a social security number or tax identification number, then we haven't learned a damn thing. And these vaccines will become pointless because then now this new strain of COVID, this new strain of the novel coronavirus, will start to spread. We have to take care of not just each other, but this planet as well. So... You know, we, we have to... I, I've always believed that our, a human being's primary role is to be stewards of the planet. Uh, and I don't think we have done a very good job of that, being stewards of the planet, that is. So, I, I mean, and now I, I do believe that, you know, there is an opportunity for us to course correct. This entire time could have been a way to figure out how to... Uh, make alternative energies more uh, feasible. You could have done a million things, but we still decided to pursue fossil fuels. You put a president in place that talks to climate activists and tells him to vote for somebody else. You know, it has to fundamentally change. We have to fundamentally change the way we've been living our lives. If you want to get through this pandemic, that's Partly, what's going to have to start happening? I'm not taking. I'm not saying don't don't think about yourself or don't think about self care or any of that sort of stuff. It's usually where these arguments end up going when you make a statement like that. That's not what I'm saying. We have taken it to that extreme of individualism. We need to pull ourselves away from that. We need to have a balancing act where we can take time that we need for ourselves and say, hey, I'm having a bad mental health week. And people around you go, well, what do you need? Do you need to be, if you need to be left alone, that's cool, but we're here when, when instead of being like, oh, you're sick, you're broken, whatever. But know that when somebody else in your community needs you, that, that you're able to be there for them within your quarantine, you know. You're not just doing it for yourself. You're doing it for yourself and your community.
That's, that's where we need to be as a society. It's not just for you, your individual freedoms and all that kind of shit. Your individual freedoms are still here. But if everybody in your community falls sick because you decided your freedoms were more important, we're going to see this happen again. Uh, I think that's where we're going to close things off. Uh, yeah, not the most hopeful video I made. Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed the content in this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. My content is highly suppressed because this is not topics of conversation that uh, that the corporate mainstream media really wants to, to, to address here. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, sign up for my email list. Uh, and that way you'll get weekly uh, uh, emails with all of the podcasts and all of the videos that I put out there. Um, and make sure you go to my website and follow me there, uh, krishmohanhaha.com. That's going to be your one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. See you in the next video.